Hey, hey. When I say peace, you say peace. 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 All right, y'all. Like she said, my name is Malcolm London. Um, I hail from these streets of the west side of Chicago. I think this work that we do every day, I, I must share that my man's just got tased by police a couple days ago and is in the hospital um, and it doesn't look too good. And so in this city, sometimes you can be really, really angry and really, really sad and really, really upset. But seeing people outside right here, right now, together, this organizing work, this work is for me, uh, anti-depressant. So I wanna say thank y'all for being here. Hopefully it does not rain. Uh, I know y'all won't care if it rains anyway, cause it's raining all over the city from mother's eyes, from father's eyes, from homies like me. And so that won't deter us. I wanna get the program kicked off. Please y'all join me in welcoming. When I say peace, you say peace, peace. peace. All right, we gonna need that energy. Welcoming Erica Phillips, the former student who went to this school. Please y'all give it up for Erica. Hi, so I'm not good at speaking off the top of my head, so I have a whole two minute speech on my phone. <laughs> can everybody hear me? Yeah. Our, can everybody hear me? Yeah. So when I went to this school as a kid, I absolutely hated it. I mean, who didn't hate school? And I used to be bullied because I was also that kid who read Harry Potter. So, you know, I was raised to believe cops were okay. Cops were supposed to make me feel safe. Also, gangs were always trying to get my brother to be his drug mule, a drug mule for them because apparently youth don't get as much time as adults. I don't know why that is, but that's what happened. And plus, he was a big dude. I used to actually think it was a good day when I saw police cars in front of my school because that meant the kids who caused the most trouble were going to be arrested and go to jail because I was taught and raised to believe that cops were taking these kids to a place where they were going to be reformed, so to speak. I didn't understand that this was a thought process and was something that was actually meant to break us all. It was like a form of tough love, like when your parents used to beat your ass for doing something you weren't supposed to do. That's what, how I viewed prison, until I was homeless. When I was homeless, I saw a completely different light because I realized a, young, a lot of young people like me would commit crimes on purpose just so they could have a place to sleep. And by sending these troubled youth to detention centers or juvie or the Audi home or calling DCFF and things like that, it only ruins them because they're branded as criminals and now their futures are destroyed because they can't get the education they deserved by sending down my school and other schools throughout the city. Their dreams of college lives and careers become almost impossible because they are ex-convicts. Worse yet, they just go back to doing what they're doing and causing a cycle all the way into adulthood where they're sent to even bigger prisons which are pretty much slave ships, so to speak, because they, a lot of prisons are now privatized and not just in the city of Chicago, just everywhere. So in a nutshell, all I'm saying is this is really screwed up because this, was, this is where my future started and I didn't know other futures were being destroyed until today, or not today, but you know, a few years back. So essentially, I want the prison stop, I want the prison pipeline to end, and I'm pretty sure everybody here wants the prison pipeline to end, right? Yes. When I say peace, you say peace. Peace? Peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all, I want to remind folks that unfortunately, um, we don't necessarily have a permit, so <laughs> that's funny. Uh, uh, so please uh, stay off the street um, and stay really close together when we march. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, the next person I want to bring up, uh, when I say peace, you say peace. 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 All right, the next person I want to bring up, they're from the Illinois Safe School Alliance. Please 
Make some noise for Janine. Hello, beautiful people. I have a sore throat and there's a train going by. So if we can all take like three steps in, that would be perfect. And also, I know there are some students in the back. I would like if we can make some room for the young people to come up towards the front, because today is about them. That would be awesome. Yeah. Young people. Students, where are the students at? Right right yeah. <laughs> Although uh, Miriam said that I'm still considered a young person, I appreciate that, but I'm a little bit older than they are at this point in the game. <laughs> Thank you, young people. So I want to start by saying that this is a beautiful crowd, and this is what gives me hope. Right? And a formerly incarcerated young person once said, education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So that is what we are doing. We are preparing for tomorrow, today, and right now by being here, right? Can I get like a poetry snap? Some feedback, some hypeness, thank you. That young person, came to be known as Malcolm X, and today is his birthday. Today we are commemorating the legacy of a man who was incarcerated by this country and spent the remainder of his life fighting for justice for all people. A man who saw the intersections of identity before the word intersection became a sexy word that funders wanted to hear. <laughs> Today we are in solidarity with our comrades nationwide taking action against the incarceration of youth who are not just the future leaders, but are the current leaders of our movement. Today, we take a united stand against the continuous creation of otherness in this country. Today, we are not only black, brown, indigenous, and queer. We are one people pushing back. We are here to take back our communities and our schools. Yeah. We are here to speak the names of, the, of those who have fallen victim to mass incarceration, to police violence, to systemic exclusion. Those being held captive by the state from Warrenville Youth Prison to Guantanamo, from Abu Ghraib to Bel Pelican Bay. We are here to speak the names of all the people incarcerated for their descent. For, being for those being held in secret prisons across the globe, of the victims of torture and political repression. Most importantly, we are here to raise up and honor every young person who needed to be heard and invested in, but were instead removed from their families, homes, and schools, and placed two miles away from where we are standing right now. Today we are here in solidarity with every person who chose starvation in order to expose the penal system for what it truly is, government sanctioned slavery. Today we speak their names and honor their sacrifice. Today we recognize that all prisoners are political and all people have the fundamental right to not just adequate, but quality and culturally relevant education. Today we say no, say no, no, to the corporate takeover of our public schools. Today we say yes to ending yes. incarceration. Yes. Let's get it one more time. Yes, yes. to ending incarceration. Today we are here to humanize, to prove that we are not statistics, we are not capital for a prison industry and that we are not afraid. Are we afraid? No. Damn straight. We will be here always standing for justice, carrying on the legacies of our ancestors and we will be here dismantling brick by brick. And as we all know and have said many, many times that until our children and our people get justice, there will be no peace. No justice? No peace. No justice? No peace. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Yeah.
Thank you so much, Janine. Again, my name is Malcolm London. I'm here repping an organization called BYP 100. It's a national organization of 100 black activists and organizers around the, the country um, fighting particularly for black youth. Um, I do want to say that this is, for folks who do not know, a symbolic action. We are marching to a prison, a detention center where every day young people are being held. And right now we're standing in front of a school that was shut down. And somebody once told me, when you close a school, you open a prison. And as I continue to read, I know that when you close a school, you open a prison. A lot of people who particularly don't look like me make a lot of money off of that. And so that's why we have to be here and have to fight for these schools, because the plan and the design is real. You don't close 50 schools in black and brown neighborhoods. You don't lock up young people of color for minute and in inefficient fucking insignificant fractions of, of committing crimes. You don't do that and then open a new Barack Obama school on the grave of Cabrini Green. You don't do that and watch young people die and continue to keep a trauma center closed. To me, that's very real and the design is very clear what folks in this city, the elite folks in this city are trying to do. Um, I do want to say Miriam asked me to read a poem and asked me to MC Miriam. That's okay. Um, so I want to do that. And then I don't know if uh, the folks from C CS. There you are. No, wait. Yeah, no. But Chicago students organize Save Our Schools. Are you here? So a rep for me? Not here? Okay. Hopefully they'll be here. All right. Um, so after the poem, after the poem. Okay. Um, I don't want to read the entire poem because it's long. When a board of ed ignores the voice of the throat it plans to close, it shows we are number two pencil shaving to fill in applications for Walmart or boxes of prisons or row houses pushed outside the city, flushed out. We are number two to boards of education that are better at plumbing than their namesake. The school to prison pipeline drains so many so well when a mayor bullhorns to a city of unions on big shoulders and says no choice no funding stiff as a neck ache says eliminate 50 schools and in the same breath heaves public dollars on a new stadium for DePaul and in the same breath regurgitates a request for more charter schools he suffocates and strangles classrooms packed like sardines Reeking of, of, reeking of sweat, and one teacher with merely two hands not wide enough to hand out quality education. The only cutting in line students fear is from their district's budget. We are blaming public schools for being stumped without looking at the root causes. Since the third grade, we're fed the illusion we have multiple choices. But when an unelected board closes schools in black and brown neighborhoods, for the past decade, it is from a new lumber we are hanging by a thread sewn around our necks. What choices are we given then, except to become pendants of freedom too? A closed school means a door may block our entrance, but our people were born at the exit. And we stand and we fight and we organize, even after tested by people who control our schools, who have never been inside them, who will never send their children there because we have numbers too. For our schools are pillars not to be pillaged for capital gain, for our choice will not be determined by a Scantron or by politicians who make squad cars out of school buses or developers who displace communities cloaked in an urban renewal banner or taken away by a board of education unveiling its splinters. Word. Um, so, I want to remind folks, again, as we march, please stay on the sidewalks. We do not have an actual permit. I mean, you know, the people shouldn't need a permit to be on their own streets, but we don't have a permit, and so we ought to stay close together when we march. Um, I want to do this chant, but I still need Miriam to uh, tell me what's happening next. But as we wait, there she is. Janine, 
Again, oh, you doing this? You doing the action piece? Yeah. All right, can I do this? Can I? All right, this chant. I love this chant. Uh, so just repeat after me. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the law has done to me? What the law has done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no justice on the ground. Ain't no justice on the ground. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the city's done to me? What the city's done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no freedom on the ground. Ain't no freedom on the ground. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the law has done to me? What the law has done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no justice on the ground. Ain't no justice on the ground. Thank you. We're gonna bring back Janine. Thank We're gonna you. do this action. What's up, beautiful people? We got, we got, Once again. We got one of the speakers here. Oh, we got a speaker? Right oh, awesome. Out. Even right. better. Cool. All right, we got a student here from Chicago, students organizing to save our schools. Please, y'all, give it up for Nadalis. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Nidalis Burgos, a uh, student activist and a co-founder of the Chicago Students Union. Um, so what I stand for is students' education. And I know that students' education is the most important thing to us. So why aren't we the front line for our education? We know what happens in our classroom. We know what goes on and what decisions should be made. But what they've always told us was, we're only kids. So here we stand fighting for a school to prison pipeline, for student education, for everything that revolves around the word student. That's what we are, that's what we're fighting for. Um, recently, Lafayette Elementary School was closed. That's my sibling's elementary school. When my brother, who's only eight years old, a second grader now, he, he got into his new elementary school and he brought a plastic toy with him to school to play for recess. That's where it was taken from him by the staff. The staff criticized him, criminalized him, pushed him down, belittled him because he brought a plastic toy to school. That was the only reason that my eyes were open to the possibilities of everything coming down to the school to prison pipeline. Because this is something we deal with every day, where us brown and black kids have to be belittled every day at our schools. Because we're just not important enough. We're always belittled. Part of today's action, we are going to symbolize being locked out very physically and literally from schools and being pushed into and locked up in prisons. So I know a group of students from Rudy have brought locks, some other people have brought locks. I brought these little tiny locks and we are going to put these locks on this fence or near this fence because this is too tiny, I'm probably just going to lay it down. <laughs> but this is to symbolize our young people being locked out of their systems of education, out of their classrooms, right? And so Miriam also brought markers and tape. So for you people who know someone that has been locked up, that's on the inside, that's been incarcerated, you can write their names and tape it to a lock or tape it to the fence to symbolize their presence here with us today. We're honoring them and we're speaking their names. And if you'd like to say their names out loud, please feel free to come back to our circle and do so. And we will honor them with you. So who wants to join me in the locking? Woo! Let's do it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to So I'm glad it's more and more people. But that just means we have to be more and more quiet. So we got a few more speakers, and then we're gonna march. Um, who's designated leader of that? Who's gonna lead the march? Who should I point to? Okay, all right. So we got a few more speakers, y'all. Again, we're here, it's a symbolic march. The school is closed. We're marching to the juvenile detention center. Join me in welcoming an amazing group out of the city of Chicago. 
doing the real work of art and activism and creatively changing the culture of this city. Please, y'all, show some love for Kumba Lee! When I say peace, y'all say peace, 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 peace. When I say love, y'all say love, 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 love. When I say respect, y'all say respect, 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 peace. My name is Darius, um, and I represent Kumalinks alongside my brothers here. Sajari, Jali. <coughs> and uh, the piece that we're about to do, the first one, uh, is in dedication to some people that we knew close and dear to us. Um, these are stories of Chicago youth who couldn't be here to rally with us today because um, Chicago violence is real, right? And that's the reason that we're all doing this march, to make sure that we know the importance of us standing up against that, you know? So, um... Don't... Don't... Water face, wake up, splash, cup. Water face, wake up, splash, cup. Water face, wake up, dazzled. By another Chicago casualty, Quentin, Shauna, I missed you. Been missing you even before metal detected your up to destiny. Piercing your beat, hard bleeding. Back when we were learning reading, shorties. Walks to the corner, saw all with you to end, but you showing me too sick graffiti. Promising it was stupid, telling, telling me you, you never, never do it. it. Brought up in a single parent home. You flunked once. Couldn't speak English well. Third grade teacher said we were taking a big test, but you only filled in the bubbles because you didn't know what the words said. Put you on a states list labeled prison bound. Used to love the Russian hum of the playground. No, no sirens. sirens. Sound soft under the dark of flickering street lights. Dear, Dear Darion, Darion. Yesterday, yesterday, I watched, watched my people smash your cornrows into your teeth and brought daylight readily watched as another Emmett Till came to be. Saw your face on TV. Which in YouTube caught, caught the reasons why the streets bring the kids to grip that fist. Still, kindergarten through eighth. We ain't textbook lies. How a civil rights fought for, erased like overnight chalkboards. And even before we could hope that our diplomas would give us more, we, we watched, watched 100, 100 freshmen get shaved to 49 sophomores in this public school to prison pipeline. Designed by the same minds that causes these sidewalk soldier wars. Resulting in straight bullets being caught by teenage girls in front of the corner, corner stores. Shana. Before high school, you were numb. Teacher called you dumb. So, so we became one with, with the wood chips. Six, Six years before Blair Holt, this violence stung. When it's lust, cradled you in its arms. I became, I became alarmed, alarmed, fleeing from disease, ease, damaging flesh. Put, put you, you to rest. rest at 13. Quentin, alone in an overcrowded classroom storm. You changed. Every, Every day from school, school uniform, teach you to conform. The black and white South Side socks pride. Your home. You started embracing this systematic fate as your own. Strolling through the hood, still pointing out the graffiti. But you started seeing it different. Said 2-6 two two was your reason for existing. existing. School so cuts couldn't offer after school choice. So you find your voice hanging with the boys. No resources or someone to vouch for your virtues. No, no sports teams to play on, so you power forward towards 10th grade. Took away your silly smile. Gates beat, beat you down until you got, got down, down with the nation. Except it's your no good hood raised nigga label. I wish they weren't right. They never saw your light. Too, Too busy dipping candle wicks for the, the next victim. victim. I saw you armed and dangerous. I remember your first prison sentence. Three months. Possession of narcotics. You grew, you grew up, up fast, fast inside. inside. The last time we spoke, you cried. I, I held you. you. But the 10 year old quits are coming back too. But in four short weeks, you got slammed with a year long prison sentence. For, for gun, gun possession. possession. I know you only carried it for protection. I don't blame you for dying. Quentin, Shana, I blame the system. When hate, 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 like the, the silent sirens, sirens riding into wars. That Sounds we... tranquilized by teens killing teens. Wish, Wish the, the world would stop the silence. silence. Casualties incarcerated. Because behind bars, free labor makes more. So, so let's, let's make some noise like this drive across floors. For the mislabeled shorties who were never taught more. Whose frequent qualms with teachers pissed on their potential as leaders. Because they, they lack the status quo of a calm culture demeanor. 54 Chicago school sirens have, have been, been silenced, silenced by too many tragic stories. Desensitized to the violence. So, so tell me, why, why is it taking so long to notice the schoolhouse or jailhouse trend? Why you twist and turn in your sleep and ignore what's happening? Five months to 2014 in Chicago is repping an ungodly amount of deaths. Now I couple that with countless arrests. Splash! <laughs> So, this poem, we 
we wrote during um, this year's poetry, Citywide Poetry Slam, and we wrote this poem to really um, tell, use, tell the audience how we use our hip hop to tell our stories and to remember where we came from and remember the, the um, change that we're trying to make. So this poem is entitled Hip Hop Holy. <laughs> From motherland necessities, we cultivate. Funga alafia ashe ashe. Anchored in ancient remedy, our valor gifts are lost in first meeting suffering. Ritual is recipe. Now is dead. Point is passion. Traditions trapped in time box. Earth, where you plant truth with treasure. In hopes of living like a prophet when the last root rises through. Slow up, grab the wall. We're breathing post-traumatic pesticides. Wiggle like you're trying to make your <gasps> fall off. Pushed into systems that carry slave symptoms. Fast fooding our families before the thorns of yesterday splintered. When hip hop was medicinal. Royal children just as cheap as teeth. Digested Sugar Hill lyrics and Jim Crow reparation stands. They grew their own classrooms. The revolution, the revolution came early. early. Hip hop in Jamaican dance hall size speakers blasting breaks of 15, 20 Sedgwick ads. Led by queens who captured their doctorate degrees from record deals. Era, era. era. Spinning, spinning, windmill whispers and freeze of heat. Spinning, spinning, windmill whispers and freeze of heat. In Detroit and Boss Towns, color fill ends for capped off crew. When community wasn't aired, it existed in garden pots and HPK radio spots. Who can see Medina's mighty black space street? Stone nations do. Depicted a need for agra. Culture snatched back. For urban activism, they plotted in places like the low end. In spring, digging and dropping their panther parent seeds. For a sustainable summer space. Like Herc and Bam searching for perfect principle on repeat. Blending seasonal ciphers for the radical fall harvest. They rock steady, back spinning in bowls of cereal spoon TV. Organically organizing crops of fresh kids. Well, with our, our tables, tables turned in the fields. fields. Mega farms hijack the name of our people. people. Mass corporations greasy scalp like fries. Everything fry, heart attack on the side. Yeah. Grandma people polo just as long as they ride. Uh, Arrest they minds, but they never bail out. Uh, Another nine to five McDonald's drop out. Turn up cause we black in the White House. Nigga, we made it. Black music, whites on, let me find out. From good food to a lot of food. Spend less time cultivating our creative crops. Jerry Hill packaged it poison our self-perception. Dipped in grease. Our culture chicken cooped into cosmetic cradled cages. Place the civilization's heart inside sunburned seeds. Ask horizons to paint over these industries. Where vacant log gardens grow people who toil your land. So we fold, flip, and flower our soil. Sickle our cipher with hieroglyphic hope. <laughs> We've always strived to return hip hop holy. Thank you. One more time for Cooper Leaks. Join me in welcoming Frederick Dennis, former student of the school we are standing in front of. Frederick Dennis, where you at? Is he here? Oh, he's right here. My man. Um, how y'all doing, everybody? Can y'all hear me? No, speak up. Speak up. How y'all doing, everybody? All right. <laughs> um, my name is Frederick. Um, I actually attended this school. I graduated from it. And, um, I grew up in this neighborhood, so I've been around for a while. And, um, actually, um, attending this school had taught me a lot of things. Um, it really brought this neighborhood together. A lot of people came, a lot of parents came and su supported the school, they supported the children. And um, taking away this school is like taking away lives. It's, um, it's saying that you don't give a care and you don't have a concern for the children that is up in this, that is up in this neighborhood. Taking away this school is saying forget about our youth. Um, taking away this, taking away this school 
it's more likely for kids to get into more trouble. It's more likely for kids to fall into poor pressure. I mean, kids have to travel to different communities just to go to a different just to go to a different school. It's not right. I mean, I also spent time in a juvenile detention center, and um, the time that I spent in that juvenile detention center, I was there for two and a half years, and um, I seen how it set kids up for failure. It it was made for it was made for children to believe that a place like that is not right for them to go to. Since you're not there for long, and since they have video games inside of there, it was nothing but like a 24-hour daycare center for children to be. And, um, and kids continue to go there because it's just like a mini vacation just to get off the streets for a little 30 days that the judge is giving them. And actually, when I went there, I was only 15. I had got out the place, I had got out of um, the juvenile detention center where I was 17 years old. And when I got out, I continued to go to school and I graduated on time in my right grade. All right. <laughs> when I graduated, I only, spent a year in, I only spent a year in a real high school. And when I graduated, I attended college and I am now attending Northern Illinois University. All right. And I just finished my first year, and I'm saying that to let you know that less, less prisons and more schools can make a change and make a big change in more communities. And can stop violence, stop gang violence, street violence, any type of violence, schools will stop it. Thank you, Frederick. And that's a good point. Again, I, I, as I've said, I'm with a group called BYP 100. We're a national organization of many, many, over 100 black organizers and activists around the nation. And very soon on the 31st, some folks should be planning out, has, passing out flyers. But we have a training on the 31st. And bro, I would absolutely love if you could be there. Um, and anybody else who's 18 to 35 uh, and is black, I would love for you to come. Um, yes, yeah, so the next speaker that we have, please uh, give it up for Angelina from the Revolutionary Poet. Revolutionary Poets Brigade. Angelina, where are you? Thank you for having me here. It's really nice to be here. And um, we are the Chicago Revolutionary Poets Brigade and we are very interested in sharing our feelings and our ideas with people like you. And we are interested in workshopping, in helping also other people express their own ideas. And I'm here to uh, remind you that this struggle is both local and international. We need very strong local links and we also need very strong international links and both the students and the prisoners are essential to this struggle. So please, you know, I, I suppose you have heard, but if not, please find out what the students in Quebec have done, what the students in Chile have done, what the students in Brazil and here because we need you and we need you to learn from one another and make this big. I mean, in Quebec, they stop the whole city, but it starts with the district. It starts with the street and then it expands. And the uh, prisoners as well. Uh, I'm just going to read you a poem that I was inspired to write it when I found out that the prisoners of California, the prisoners of Guantanamo and the prisoners of Palestine had gone into a hunger strike at the same time. So it was this international link and I doubt that they even knew it from one another because it is not easy in a prison to know what is going on in the world, but yet this happened. And now the people who are being deported are also on hunger strike. So this is a poem based on that and it says, it has begun. It is the prisoners who have started it globally with non-violence. Two words put together into a united single one, a Kingian, proactive, unified concept, a path to justice, a path to creative freedom.
It has begun in the heart of darkness, in the place of isolation and torture, in the place of impunity, in, in the essential hidden place, in the blind spot, in the locked up, secret, clandestine place where denial takes place, hidden from our eyes and our heart. Guantanamo, that paramount no place of denial with a daily invisible death of those unfortunate enough to be trapped inside the fangs of an invisible system with no trial. California, where the black and brown are to be found in bigger numbers than slaves were ever found during the official time of slavery. Palestine, where children are put in dungeons by an invasive army that denies their future while it steals their land. It has begun. It has begun with the most Gandhian of techniques, hunger strike, a means of civil disobedience that has its center in our place of power, in our home amid horror, our body. This collective body that is now once again legally tamed by the global inquisition via torture and isolation. This collective prisoner body that now refuses to cooperate. This body that women know so well, a body that has been trafficked, kidnapped, commercialized, and tantalized via rape and humiliation so that pimps can keep up the first business of the world, prostitution, so that Johns can fantasize they are the men they are not. A body that must become a forced receptacle for the reproduction of future compliant slaves for the state of Texas as a metaphor of forced motherhood, where women can only cook and cheerlead and sing the praises of the global masters. It has begun. It has begun with a radical act of will to refuse to be fed one more morsel of the horror, to refuse to consume one more single poison, to refuse one more crumbling building to fall down and bury exploited workers into oblivion, to refuse one more being, one more heart, one more body to be isolated, humiliated and tortured in secret. The global awareness of the prisoners we all are has begun on all four corners of the earth. It has begun. This is a hurried, urgent, ill-constructed poem with no rhyme or rhythm, but simple repetition and a heart that hungers, a belly that aches, a revolted stomach with tense limbs and an arched back that cannot take it any longer. My body has become one with the collective sick body of humankind, with the body of the exhausted wolf that tries to flee from killing helicopters and looks at them with its dying gaze, with its body riddled with bullets, with the body of planet Earth that revolts in earthquakes, heat waves and tsunamis. This poem needs to be redone, reshaped, translated, circulated, changed and added on, but it has begun. Now it must be set in motion with a global lengthy strike, a collective act of will, a core seat, a global stoppage, a stern refusal to go on business as usual. As usual. Now its time it germinates into a global constituency of projects, into a thorough questioning of what it is we all want together from our different heads, from our separate thoughts, pulsing atoms of one living body with millions of ideas put together for a healthy functioning. It has begun. 
It has begun, and it has been revealed by an avant-garde of minds, global minds, who have looked and have been put into this bottomless pit of torture and secrecy set in motion for the reproduction of a body of slavery. It has been revealed by the whistleblowers. They have given birth to a thousand lights so we may look into this secrecy, so we may clean this heart of darkness, so we may give voice and name to our blind spots, so we may put an end to the spy machine that creates our artificial misery in a planet of plenty. It has begun. We, the prisoners have begun our way to freedom with our hungry body that feeds on our refusal. It has begun. Thank you. Thank you. So we got two more speakers and then we're gonna begin the march. Thank you again, Angelina, for that. For that. Um Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, please, y'all, show some love to Rigo from the International Socialist Organization. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm Rigo, and I'm 25 years old. I grew up in the southwest of Chicago, um, and I went to CPS for both elementary school and high school. And too many times, the lines were blurred between a school and a prison. We had to be humiliated once in a while with surprise uh, searches when we were walking into school. And many times, uh, many of our classmates did not come back from a weekend. They were either shot or arrested. And too many times, um, I've been, I'm 25 now, and I've been to more funerals or welcome back parties than I've been to uh, college graduations in the last six years. And then what's even more shameful is that people like Barack Obama go on TV and they blame us for our quote unquote values. But what about their values? They've deported two millions of our brothers, sisters, mothers, and parents. What are we supposed to do after they deport them? And what are we supposed to do when his administration is the one that's closing down all our schools and spending trillions of dollars killing our Palestinian, Afghani, and Iraqi brothers and sisters? And with his administration saying that we are not good enough for the education that they are giving their children and their, um, and whatever, um, <laughs> and whoever else. Okay, but I want to also say that, um, okay, that's pretty much all I really had to say. I just had, <laughs> and that um, this is not an accident or a byproduct. And I also, oh yeah, I wanted to make an argument to say that these chains are not only the chains that they are locking us up with. These are still the same chains that they locked up our ancestors in slavery. And not until we break those chains will we actually live in a free society and it's a part of the system. They are just adapting to it in new ways. It may not be uh, Jim Crow anymore, but it's definitely the prison industrial complex and we need to tear it down. And the whole system has to go with it because this system operates on racism. It is more profitable for them to have more prisons open, for profit systems open. They have no shame. They are locking up 14-year-olds, 12-year-olds, and, and throwing away the key. And we need to yeah. say that th these are our children. Um, and I don't mean any disrespect to the uh, 200 uh, schoolgirls that were kidnapped in Africa, but our children are also being kidnapped. And we need to save our kids. We need them to return our kids, too. And All right. And so we're going to begin the march. But before I do that, I, I do want to point out the young people got these dope fly, these dope Woo! things right here. And one, one of the things that scares me is all of these new signs that say building a new Chicago. And to me, that Chicago does not look like one that I'm supposed to live in. Right. You know, when you close all of these schools, when you open up new high rises, I know damn for sure I can't afford to live there. So I know it's not for me. And so we don't want to build a new Chicago. We want to save and repair the one we already have. All right. And so we're going to begin that as we march to the Juvenile Detention Center, where just a couple weeks ago, there was a poetry slam in there with young people who are locked up. And I cried constantly. And so we do want to remember that there's actual people, children, kids, living in that, in that big fuck thing there. And there's people making money off of it. So Miriam, 